Okay, welcome to a quick uh, overview of the uh, highlights of the new RC Crew Chief version 4. And as usual, this is free to all registered users. Um, so, first thing is uh, we can now change this image. Uh, so, you can customize this to suit your uh, own vehicles. So, right now I've got uh, this is a two wheel buggy shown here. Obviously, that's not a two-wheel buggy, so if we open the car manager and just click on the image, then you can go in and you can pull any uh, image you want to use as uh, as the representation for the car. So it just so happens we have a two-wheel drive buggy, buggy imitation, right? image there, and so we'll click that, click Save, and close it out, and now you've got a picture of buggy there. So not really... Too exciting, but something allows you to customize your uh, uh, program a little bit to suit what you're doing. So let's get into the meat of it. Uh, first thing you're going to have to do as soon as you get the update and the program opens, you're going to see this little pop up. So this little pop up says there's no steering model entered for the chassis, and you can add a generic steering model in the chassis manager. Uh, you can just choose to keep closing this. You don't have to do anything with the steering, uh, but realistically, what's the point? Uh, the reason you've got this program is so you can learn about all this stuff. So let's go ahead and open the chassis manager. Click on our new steering tab here, and again, it's going to come up. And now it's going to say, click Create Generic Model button to auto-create auto a model, or you can enter your own values. So what we've got here right now everything is zero so you can go through and you can enter all the values yourself there's two different types of steering racks here right now the slider rack which just moves side to side uh, the low c22 uh, 2.0 has a rack like this the tc3 had a rack like this i believe the schumacher mi5 has a slider rack so you know a number of vehicles out there do have this configuration the most popular is the bell crank uh, so there's all the dimensions that you need for the bell crank. Uh, so you can go ahead and you can measure this up for your car and just enter all these values. Or you can just go create generic model. So what it's going to do is it's going to create a generic model. It's going to set the, uh, the angles so you have uh, true, anger, true Ackerman at uh, zero steer angle. Uh, but realistically, the best way to uh, to do this is to measure it up so that it actually represents your car. Now, the other thing you do here is you enter in uh, alternate steering <laughs> positions. So a lot of uh, vehicles will have you know maybe two locations out at the hub that you can you can uh, connect the tie rod to, and they will also have positions where you can connect the rack to. So first thing you want to do here is you want to identify it. So I'm going to just put some arbitrary ones in here. I'm going to say this is my, just going to call it real simple. I'm just going to say it's my inner position. And so that's my default position that's shown here because my offsets are 0 and 0. And then I'm going to put an outer position in. And I'm just going to say the horizontal offset 0. So it's not being offset in that direction. And we're just going to do a vertical offset. And we'll say that's 4 millimeters. Okay, so now we've got an inner and an outer position. We save and exit, and now you can see we've got two points there. We can do the same thing for shims. <clears throat> we can add shims with a vertical offset, uh, and we name these points as well. The reason you want to name these points is when you go to the setup page, it's going to display the names of the points. So it makes it a lot easier to see where you've got your setup. So again, we're going to just call this, we're going to say, uh, say this is a shim type, so we're going to put in, uh, uh, just call it uh, zero millimeters. And that's our base point, and then we're going to do, say, two millimeters. And that is plus two, and we'll say we've got a real big one, we'll go to four millimeters. Okay, so save and exit, so now you can see it's added these points. So basically that's all you need to do. You don't even have to add these alternate points if you don't want to. You can just have the steering model in there and, and be good to go. Uh, the other thing you want to do is you want to add in whatever uh, kick up you may have. Uh, since this is a buggy, let's throw some kick up in here. So we'll put in 25 degrees for the 
for the kick-up angle, uh, caster is normally around 5 degrees for one of these. And we'll just leave the toe at 0 for now. You can put it in as, as minus. Minus is uh, is toe out. Oops. Minus is toe out. You can see there it's redrawn it and drawn it with the toe out. And positive is toe in. So let's just leave that like that. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is uh, as I've changed numbers, the background has changed to a yellow. This is applied universally over the whole chassis manager so that as you make changes to something, uh, it sh highlights it in yellow so that you know you've changed it. Uh, and you can decide whether you want to save those changes or not. Uh, if I was to try and close out the chassis manager right now, I'm going to get a pop-up that's going to come up here and it's going to say I've got unsaved changes uh, on the steering page. And if you want to leave without saving them, that's, that's fine. Uh, but that's not what I want to do. I want to save these changes. So as soon as I save them, now everything turns white and we're all good to go. So now we have created a steering model for our two-wheel drive buggy. So let's go into <coughs> the um, setup page and have a look at what happens here. So now we've got our suspension model and everything as per normal. And now we've got a steering model. So we can do a number of things with this. Uh, we can just use an animation so we can see and we get a dynamic display of what the uh, inside or sorry the outside and inside steering angle is. And you know, we can move both directions. We also have this Ackerman bar graph here. And what this does is shows you where or how the uh, uh, steering of the actual model relates to what would be considered true Ackerman. If it's pro Ackerman, that means that the steering angle is the difference in the steering angle between the inside and outside wheel is greater than what true Ackerman would be, uh, meaning there's more uh, difference in the angle. If it's anti Ackerman, that means that the wheels are more tending towards being more parallel. So we've also got these graphs here, and the graph that I've got showing up here right now is the wheel angle difference uh, versus the outside wheel angle. So essentially what it is, is when I put a steer angle on here of 10 degrees, so if I go here at 10 degrees, it shows me what the difference between the inside and the outside wheel angle is. The other thing that we can look at is our relative Ackerman. Now relative Ackerman is basically what the Ackerman angle is relative to to the um, true Ackerman. So you can see here it starts out, it follows it very closely and then all of a sudden it starts to diverge quite quickly and that's just part of the geometry once you start getting out to the high steering angles you can see that I've got a real big steering angle on my uh, inside wheel compared to the outside wheel. The other thing you can look at is the camber angles. So this shows you what the, the wheel camber does as a function of your outside steer angle. So you can see here as we, as we move out to greater and greater angles, we're getting more and more nonlinear on our uh, inside wheel. And this is our outside wheel. So that's some features that you can you can get out of the uh, steering module. Some other changes that have been made to the uh, um, setup page is now as you make a change to your any of the values in here. So if we change this to 22, what's going to happen is the background again is going to turn yellow to show you that you have moved it, you have changed it, and the other thing that's going to happen is you're going to get uh, changes to the display of the suspension properties. So what you see here now is there's numbers in red that have appeared. So these numbers show you what the value was before you made whatever change you made over here. And only the properties that are affected by your change pop up in red. So I just changed the ride height. 
So in changing the ride height, that's changed my roll center. It's changed my chassis roll sensitivity a little bit, and it's changed my camber gain a little bit. The other thing is, is the camber gain has now moved over into the suspension properties. It used to be over in this area here, and it just made more sense to put it all in the same area. So, you know, if we make a change to a suspension link, let's say, for example, background turns yellow. We have our red circle here, which shows us where we were. And over here with our suspension properties, again, the only change that happens as a function of moving these is we've changed our camber gain and our front roll center and our chassis roll sensitivity has gone down again. So when we can continue doing things, we can move over here, make changes to this. And again, now we're just, now we're making changes to the rear. We go to the shocks. We can change shock positions. And now we're going to get more things are going to show up as, as being changed. So it's a nice handy thing to show you where you were. The red numbers are where you were. The black numbers are where you're at with the changes that you've made. Other thing that's changed is the uh, spring drop-down boxes now have both the uh, uh, the name and the rate displayed. So you can see uh, what rate springs you're using. This one here, the way it was named, the rate was already in it, but in most cases you just name it as a, just give it a color uh, and uh, you don't have an idea of what the rate is, so now you can display that. So that's the main changes in the setup page. Weight transfer, you know, let's see it's coming up and telling me I'm going to just say no, I don't really want to change those. I don't want to make, uh, I want to leave. So now we get onto the uh, uh, weight transfer page. Uh, really no changes here. The only thing is, is our spring drop down boxes are the same as on the uh, on the uh, setup page. Dynamic page. The dynamic page we've now integrated in the uh, steering uh, effects. So now when you uh, look at the front suspension you have a steer angle that you can put on here and this is the steer angle of the outside wheel as our little pop-up tells us here. So at a 10 degree steer angle this is the camber angles that you would be looking at on your uh, on your tires so you can see here our uh, outside wheel we've we've gone from our static look at our camera angles uh, we've gone from our static I believe this was set at uh, let's just have a look here suspension was set at minus 1.5 so we've gone from minus 1.5 to almost 5 uh, because of the 25 degree kick up angle and the 5 degrees of caster that we've got built into this. So this allows you now and when you animate that you can see what happens with the uh, with the, your camera angle changes how much how much it changes as the uh, as the chassis rolls which can be a very helpful thing to uh, gain a grasp of. So that's pretty much it right now. Uh, I'm going to sign off and hopefully you'll uh, be able to take advantage of the new, future, new features.